Hello there, Mad Mike here, and welcome back to the channel. And unfortunately, today we are doing another death video. Now, this is one that I actually missed initially. It was brought to my attention earlier this evening, um, and that's that uh, Daria Nicolodi has passed away. Now, a lot of people uh, on here may not know that name. You may have heard me mention that name on a couple of occasions when talking about uh, Italian horror films, and. Uh, the reason why is because Dario Nicolodi um, was in a lot of Dario Argento horror films, most of them his, um, really his best films uh, for the most part. You know, a lot of his, his films when he was at the height of his career from the mid-70s all the way through to the mid-80s. Um, and the thing is, Dario Nicolodi is somebody who does not get enough credit for some of the things that she contributed to Italian horror. Now, she's been recognized for it over time. She was even recognized for it at the time uh, for certain things like Suspiria. But um, she kind of, the, the thing is, is that Dario Argento had a way of using her that was very, very good and very, very unique whenever he had her in a film. And she was very, very good at taking direction from him and doing, you know, the best with those parts. Because th th those parts, you could, if you had a different actress there, they could be very two-dimensional. Um, they could be very kind of plain and boring. But she makes them fun. She makes them interesting. And she adds her own little touches to them. And that, that's kind of why I like her as an actress in those films, is because she's always entertaining to an extent. Um, and... I'm really going to go over, for, for her movies, I'm really going to go over the Dario Argento films because they're so intertwined. You know, they have a, they had a child together, uh, Asia Argento, um, and they were together for 10 years. Um, and like I said, a majority of that, you know, and stuff like that. And then, but she also worked for, you know, some other directors too. She was in uh, Shock by Mario Bava. Um, that was, I think, his last film or second to last film. It was, it was very close to the end of his life. Um, but... I'm going to go over kind of the major ones, which are the ones that I love her in, and I'm going to start with Deep Red, because that's really where a lot of, in terms, that was her start of her work with Argento. He cast her for that film. Um, and then later on, they wound up, you know, following in love and having a kid, who was also born in 1975, so, you know, the, the filming uh, brought them together. But the character that she plays in Deep Red, Gianna, who is a uh, reporter, she is very different from a film character that we would see around that time period for the most part. You know, it's, there are exceptions, but she was a character that was kind of, she wasn't really a romantic interest for um, the main character who's played by uh, David Hemmings. Um, she's not really, she's more, uh, it, it, they play it more like a kind of like, almost like a buddy cop type of thing. Uh, you know, where they're trying to hunt down this killer in this movie. And the thing is, is that she's portrayed as a, as an equal to him in the sense that, you know, any time, it's, it's, tick for, it's a tit for tat. You know, every time he says something to her, she's able to make a comeback. You know, he's able to best her. She's able to best him mentally in some of the situations. You know, she, uh, but, you know, in the end, we do have David Hemmings, uh, uh, you know, coming through as the hero of the story. Um, but he can't get to that point without her character. And she has some fun little moments in there, too. Some moments that kind of, they, they give her character a little bit of flair. The stuff with the car, which is kind of comedic, where the, she has this piece of junk car. Um, and, you know, the stuff where, it, there's this scene um, right after they have just had, you know, her and David Hemmings have just had this kind of argument. David Hemmings goes off to do some further investigating. Uh, she takes this little kind of, you know, this mini cigar, and she twirls it in her hands as she brings it up to her mouth, and then it cuts away from that. That's very interesting for that character, because it shows they're kind of fidgety. It could be, like, a nervous thing, maybe, you know, because she's concerned about David Hemmings, because she wanted to go with him initially. Maybe she's pissed um, at him for that as well. You know, there's... Because you know, they kind of have an argument. David Hemmings kind of goes his own way, but I like that scene because it gives her character a bit more personality than I would say than if she than if you didn't have that, um, because it can mean a lot of different things depending on how you want to interpret it. In that movie, you can interpret a lot of things a lot of different ways. It's it's kind of a, a jumbled bunch. Um, but I think when you get to her big contribution to our Argento's works is when you get to Suspiria, and she has a co-writing credit on that, which she should. Um, and she, she is responsible for a lot of the, the type of kind of 
feel and environment of that film, because she worked really closely with Argento to develop that film. That, that film is credited really as more her concept than his, um, in terms of coming up with the ideas and, and the writing and stuff. Um, you know, Argento obviously did his own things with the directing, which he does very well, but uh, she does a good job. She's also in that movie as well. Um, which again, she does a good job at that too. But you know, really, that's re that's her big thing. Is is that that's considered Dario Argento's best film by a lot of people, including me. I think Suspiria is his best film. Um, but she really kind of uh, the the reason why we have Suspiria is because of their collaboration together, and it, at least fifty percent of that has to go to Nicoloni. Um, you know, that's that's one of those things that I kind of really love about Suspiria is the idea that you know it's. It, all of these bright and vibrant colors and this environment and this music in this environment, you know, it's, the music is, it's, it's a feel movie. It's not really a cohesive movie. Let's put it that way. There, there, I mean, there, there is some cohesion to the plot and some stuff going on, but, um, for the most part, it's really, you know, a lot of the sequences in the film are really dedicated to, to these bright and vibrant colors and this, this almost horrifying, like, circus music that's going on with it. it. It reminds me of, like, if you took circus music and sped it up to, like, one and a half times um, and then started playing it over the scene of the, these, uh, you know, these these women, a lot of them dressed in, in white or, or something like that, just running through these hallways that are lit with brightly green and red lights. Um, the neon on red of the blood in the film, the gore too, which is again is you know a staple for Italian horror. Um, everything about that movie is is amazing to me. Um, yeah, again, the, there's really not much of a story. So if, if you're going into that seeing you know looking for a very comprehensive story, you're probably not going to get it. It's relatively simple, but I do enjoy that film because it's a very good kind of watch and just kind of turn your brain off and just let your imagination run wild with what's happening on the screen. Um, and then we go on, she was also in some of his other films, uh, you know, his other giallos, you know, Tenabre, which is one of actually my kind of sleeper favorites by him. I did a movie spotlight on that. Uh, she plays the assistant to the uh, main character, who's an author, um, and she really has kind of, kind of some of the best scenes in that with him, especially at the end of the movie. Um, but again, she kind of she she's more of a supporting role in there. But the thing is, is that her character's connection with the main character is what sort of makes everything so horrifying at the end, um, because we understand. I mean, I'm not going to give away anything about that movie, but you know, by the end of the movie, we understand what's been happening the entire time, and it's just it's so horrifying thinking about it from her perspective because she's been so close to all these people for so many years. It seems like, um, you know, something ridiculous, um, but. Yeah, you know, I, I like her in that film. And then one of her uh, hammiest performances is in Phenomena. Now, this is um, this is a movie, and again, we did this, we did this on a uh, Rated R Riffs, and I think we did this, I think I did a movie spotlight on this as well. Um, Phenomena, basically, it starred Jennifer Connelly. You also had some other, you know, veteran talent in there, like Donald Pleasance. Um, and it's basically, you know, it, it's kind of a giallo with a little bit of these supernatural elements, like this girl Jennifer Connelly, she can, like, you know, communicate and see through bugs and shit. Um, but Daria Nicolodi plays this kind of caretaker character that's supposed to be taking care of Jennifer Connelly. Um, and we find out all of this sort of weird information with her. But And then by the end of the movie, she kind of dominates the third act. Um, she's one of the, she's probably one of the most uh, weird and horrifying villains in a Dario Argento movie, and that's saying a lot. Um, but the end of that film, she is just, you know, she she's almost... Uh, this unstoppable machine just like you know keep mowing forward regardless of like what's happening and she has some of the best kind of like what the fuck moments at the end of that movie where some of the shit that she does uh but you know again that's that's just kind of the the way that the end of that movie's written and that movie was not a really big success but i do enjoy her in that role um well, the other thing is, is that, you know, she's she was a big contributor to a lot of other stuff. She was actually in another Dario Argento movie after that. I think it was called Opera, uh, which I haven't seen, but uh, that was after they had actually separated because Phenomena was the last movie they did together that they were still actually romantically involved, which was 1985, and then they, they separated after that. Um, but th that's the other thing, too, is that she left such a stamp on Argento's career because after 1985... Uh, really, Dario Argento did not make uh, too many extremely good films. Uh, that was kind of his last hurrah was in like the 1985-1986 era, where you know he had 
he had left Phenomena after that had kind of squelled off and he went to go do Demons with Lamberto Bava. Um, and I think a large part of that was the, the removal of Dario Nicolotti's creative input on a lot of his projects, um, which, again, you know, Phenomena was not a box office success, but you look at the successes that were in there. Also, sorry, I almost skipped over this, the, uh, the sequel to Suspiria, which is called Inferno, um, which I do like that movie, even though some people think it's a bit more boring. I don't think it's as good as Suspiria, and it's definitely a million times better than Mother of Tears. I'm not getting into that. I'm not getting into that, but... Um, but Inferno, again, it, it's carrying on with the themes of Suspiria, which, again, were her inspiration. I'm sure she had a lot of creative input on Inferno as well. She was in the movie again. Um, you know, probably just kind of easy to keep casting her at that point if Dario was directing the film. Um, but, again, it, it, her stamp on those films cannot be ignored uh, by anybody who is an Italian horror fan, and I am one. Um, and, again... Uh, the, you know, we wouldn't have a movie like Suspiria, which is one of the best genre entries of Italian horror that's ever been made, if it was not for Daria Nicolodi. So that's kind of why I wanted to highlight her is because she's kind of a figure that's overlooked in a lot of that. Um, and it is sad to learn of her passing, even though it's it's well after the fact at this point. Um, but, you know, that's just kind of my retrospective on her. I want to know what yours is. Um, you know, have you seen any of the movies that she's been in? Uh, are you a fan of hers? Are you a fan of Dario Argento? Do you, uh, do you like Dario Nicolodi in any of, you know, Argento's films or any other films that she was in? Because like I said, she was in some with Mario Bava's, or at least one of Mario Bava's, and she was in some other films too, uh, off and on through her film career before she met Argento as well. So, um, you know, anything you guys have to say, um, you know, about that, you can put it in the comments below as usual. Um, and remember to uh, hit the bell for notifications, hit the like button, subscribe, and remember... I live my life free of compromise. Do you?